Hello, this is Kate Nova, and welcome to this sew along of the Style Arc Ethel Top. The Ethel Top is a cap sleeve top with some interesting style lines, as you can see here. And it's finished off with some facings on the sleeve, the cap sleeve, and also on the neckline. Here I've got the pattern, and as with all style arc patterns, make sure that when you're cutting your paper, if you choose to cut instead of trace, that you keep a hold of the instructions so that you have the sizing and um, instruction information to hand. The fabric I'm going to be using today is a rami. So rami is similar to linen in hands feel and drape and body, but it is made from a plant in the nettle family rather than linen. So here it is, and it is from the Minerva Core range in the colour Mocha. This sew along is actually a two-part series because as well as the Ethel top, Style Arc also has the Ethel trousers, which is this one, and I'll be doing that in a separate sew along. Back to the top, in terms of supplies, you will need some interfacing to cover the facings on the sleeve and also on the neckline. Of course, you will need some needles. I've just got a universal um, size 18 needle here, but of course you need to choose depending on the fabric that you use. And I've got some matching thread in color 724. In terms of fabric, anything woven would work. So as I mentioned, I've got a rami here, but I could also imagine that you could make this in a double gauze, for example, or a chambray. Anything that's not too um, heavyweight will work. As you can see here, the Ethel top has a center front panel and two side fronts and the same again on the back. So the first thing we are going to do is to stitch together these two seams here. If you look at the pattern pieces, this is the side front. Um, it helpfully has notches for you. So there's one, two, three notches. And this is the neckline and this is the armhole. So let's go and do that. This is my center front piece and this is my side front piece and you can see this is the neckline. So I'm just going to flip this over and start pinning. So I first pin the neckline and then I like to pin the bottom piece. And then find the notches and match them up along the edge here. I just want to point out that at the hem here, where you've got these kinds of angled seams, you will see a little corner here sticking out. And that's a good thing because we're going to stitch with a one centimeter seam allowance, which is where this pin is. And then once you open up the seam, you're going to get a nice straight edge there. So that's why you have a bit of a step. This is the front now sewn together and I've just overlocked it as well and pressed it towards the side. Now I'm going to repeat the same thing for the back. On the back you also have a centerpiece and again there's a lot of notches to help you along. There's a double notch up the top, uh, towards the middle and towards the bottom. So it's the same process. That is the back now sewn together. This is the neckline and you can tell it's the back because it's much shallower than the front neckline, which is here. So now we are going to join the shoulder seams. So I'm going to place the right side of the front uh, together with the right side of the back and then seam those two together. So that's going to be this edge here and this edge here. This is the shoulder seam now sewn on both sides and I've also overlocked it. I'm going to press it and because this shoulder seam is in a slight curve, I'm going to use a pressing tool, which is this one. You can also get them from Minerva. And they're really handy because it just allows you to press the shape into it. So what I mean, this, like I said, this is on a curve and if you try to press this flat on a table, it doesn't always work perfectly. So this is a good solution. Now we turn our attention to the neckline facings. So we've got a back one and there's also a front one, of course, and they are both interfaced here, as you can see. 
So I'm going to place them right sides together and the first thing I'm going to do is to seam them together using a one centimeter seam allowance. And then I'm going to press it open and then overlock all around the outer edge. This is the neckline facing done. So as you can see, I've just stitched it together and then overlocked all around the outside. It's helpful to attach the facing to the neckline now because we haven't yet attached the side seams. Um, so you can lay it out quite flat. So this is the body of the garment again. And this is the hole for the head. And we are going to place the facing right sides together with the garment. Make sure you've got the back and front um, correct. So as before, the front neckline is the shallower one. And then you're just going to line up the shoulder seams and then pin and stitch all the way around. Now, very helpfully, um, Style Arc has variable seam allowances. So you're going to be sewing here with a six millimeter seam allowance. And that just helps uh, you because it means that you don't have to trim it down a little bit later, unlike if you had sewn it with a one centimeter seam allowance. This is the facing now sewn to the body and I'm just going to understitch. So what that means is that I'm going to stitch the facing to this little bit of seam allowance underneath just next to the edge, as you can see here. And what that does is it stops your facing from wanting to flip out towards the front side. So that's it with the understitching. And I'm also just going to trim down some of these small corners just to avoid some bulk. This is optional, but I think it just gives a nice finish. So I'm just going to go around the neckline and do this. And then afterwards, I'm going to flip the facing to the inside. And then you can either use a few hand stitches or a few machine stitches just to tack this facing to the shoulder seam so it's not going anywhere. Optionally, you could also top stitch all the way around the facing if you like that kind of look. It's up to you. For the armhole facing, it's important to notice where your notches are because this is showing you that this is the back and this is the front. Before you begin, you will need to overlock around these three edges of your armhole facing like this. And then we are going to lay out our top so that here is the uh, neckline, this is the front, this is the back, so I've put it on its side, and this is the shoulder seam that you see here. Again, very helpfully, um, Starlark has actually stepped it for you already um, at the seam allowance, so it's easy to tell which bit is which. And then you just need to go uh, right sides together again with your armhole facing, making sure that you match the two double notches towards the back here. And then you stitch along this line here. And don't worry about the step, uh, just stop, keep going in a straight line and stop at that corner. So this dashed line is the stitching line on the pattern piece. This is the facing stitched on. You can see I stopped about a centimeter from the edge here. I've also put under stitching on it. So same as the neckline, um, you stitch the facing next to the edge to the seam allowance underneath. And then I've overlocked the side seam piece here. What I'm going to do now is to join the side seam. So I'm going to fold in the facing and temporarily pin it so it doesn't move anywhere. And then of course you take your front and your back, you pin together at the hem. There's a notch there as well towards the hem to help you along. And then you are going to stitch the side seam all the way until you reach the corner here where you stopped with your hem facing, your armhole facing rather. 
So I'm going to go all the way until here. The side seam is done now and pressed open. And as I mentioned, I stopped in this corner here. So what you do now is then you arrange your armhole facings into their final position, like so. Let's pop the pin there. And same again on the other side. And then you're going to top stitch into place like this all the way around. And same again on the other side. Top stitching is in. You can't really see it from this side because it just blends with the overlocking. But let me turn this the right way out so you can see. And I have very well matching thread, so um, but you can kind of see it there. And of course, now we just repeat this on the other sleeve or the other armhole. So this is the top just about finished and Minerva also have some nice labels. So if you wanted to put one in, um, you can sort of just slide that under the facing here and then stitch that down. The last thing to do in our Ethel Top adventure is the hem. Now, I've just tried this on and for me the length as it is is actually fine so I'm just going to take the simple way and overlock it and then stitch it down so all in all I lose about a centimeter's worth of length. Now Style Arc has a hem facing and as you can see it's just a rectangle so this is why I could also afford to take this uh, shorter option without any problems. It's not a shaped hem at all. So if you are going to use the hem facing, which of course you can, there's a couple of notches here and you would construct it in exactly the same way as you did the neckline facing. So what that means is that you would have your two pieces. So imagine this is one piece, this is one piece. You stitch the short ends together and then you Place it right sides to right sides here, making sure that you match this little notch. You would stitch all the way around, fold it over, under stitch, and then tack it down at the hem, at the side seam. So it's exactly the same as you did with the neckline facing, but it's good to know that there are different options. Here is my finished Ethel top. And I'm just going to turn around so you can see the back. I've worn this Ethel top with the matching Ethel pants. And if you're interested in that, then we have a sew along as well. Um, I've just popped on a necklace and I'm just going to add a crossbody bag. And then I think this can work really well as a two piece set. Don't forget to follow Minerva for daily inspiration, whether it's tutorials or patterns or fabrics, or just to see what other makers have been getting up to. If you also make an account on Minerva, then of course we would love to see your creations as well. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.